Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, uh, you know, just living the dream here. Self isolation. <laughs> true, 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 true. How's everything going there? Um, things are cool, man. Things are cool. Um, <laughs> it's quiet, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean. You think you, you like you never know what you're gonna live through in your lifetime, and this is this is one of those moments. <laughs> this is a big curveball. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have called this, but you know, here we are. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, I wanted to uh, you know jump into this right away, and we'll we'll kind of go over some of the stuff that's been coming up in your life. I mean, we have uh, I know just late last month you dropped uh, "Read 'Em and Weep." And uh, I don't know if you want to get into a little bit of that and the, the music video for that and how uh, how everything was filming that. It was kind of a, uh, a lot of really cool visuals in that, in that music video. It came out great. I really was pretty happy with how that video came out. Um, yeah, uh, that, you know, it was um, something that was done kind of spur of the moment. Just uh, like I was here and my videographer was there and it was like, dang, can we, can we make this happen? And we just kind of cooked it up out of, out of thin air, um, super quick. I was at, uh, I was in San Diego at TwitchCon and we shot it on the campus of their big, uh, I don't even know what you call it there, but it's a big yeah. event center. It's, it's really big. Right. Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was dope, man. Um, have fun shooting it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, speaking of TwitchCon and, and you working with Astro Gaming and everything, uh, this is kind of one of those, those times where it's nice to, uh, to have a little bit of time to to jump back into video games and to be to be messing around with that. How's your uh, how's your skills improved in video games now that you've had a little more time? Uh, my thumbs are are hot. You yeah. know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, I have had more time to be on the game since quarantine, since they don't want you to leave the house anyway. Um, right. Um, so, so that's been cool, man. I've been on get, getting on Twitch a little bit. Uh, my Twitch is uh, at Ubiqui Twitch, um, and uh, right now I've just been getting on there gaming, talking, bullshitting. Um, <laughs> but I think that uh, I'm probably going to grow it into something uh, uh, that's a little more um, uh, versatile in the in the future. Yeah, and you, I mean, you are on. Uh... Merz's green room uh on twitch there too but yeah. you know when we talked a while back uh you know it started with Merz told me that he could take on anybody in strange music he could he could be anybody in games he could he could take you on shit. yep and so so i'm wondering have you and have you and Merz faced off and or what what game would you face off in him that you feel most confident I mean, I feel very confident in Street Fighter II Champion Edition, which is generally where men come to solve larger <laughs> issues in life. But like, I don't know. It's a, it's been a lot of it's been a lot of loose talk to tell you the truth. You know, <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna see this or not. But I was at his crib not too long ago, like just before COVID hit and everything. It was like I don't know, maybe late February or early March or something. I can't remember exactly when, but we, I was at the crib didn't come up, you know, it was all <laughs> daps and hand slaps, but you know, when we get di get a distance apart, suddenly it's all, it's all reckless, reckless talk out the side of the neck. But we'll, we, you know, we can see, I would be happy to stream it. If he was Absolutely. interested in that, I would love to stream some Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, make sure his connection's good so we don't have any nonsense. <laughs> He's got a new controller, whatever he needs. You know? Right. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Hey, so for, uh, for everybody that's, that's on the stream right now, um, if you want to start, um, putting your questions through, um, we're going to do our quarantine question segment here. And then at the end of it, um, we'll open it up for anybody that wants to, to ask their questions at the bottom. But, um, so the, the first question that I have is, uh, you know, once, once you get into isolation and you're, you're by yourself or especially for people that like have lived by themselves for a long time, you kind of realize you do a lot of weird shit when you're by yourself. Um, so what's one thing that you've like caught yourself doing that you just thought like, what, what am I doing right now? <laughs> um, I mean, something that I do habitually that I don't know, I've, Maybe it's weird. I sweep off my balcony. I don't know if that's weird. Maybe I'm just tidy, right? I have like a little balcony. I sweep it off. Um, I did a, one crazy thing that I did do during this this uh, 
this quarantine, my son was present. And so that's how I realized it was a little bit crazy. Maybe, maybe you, if I expand, you'll understand, if I expand, yeah. you'll understand, but I count myself vacuuming the walls um, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was vacuuming the walls. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have some you ever the walls? I, I have never vacuumed walls. I've washed walls. I've wiped walls down. I've, I've definitely never vacuumed them. <laughs> I vacuumed my wall. Well, I have like a uh, exposed concrete wall. It's like the outer wall on the outside of the building or whatever. Yep. It's dope. Like, it's, my loft is cool or whatever. But um, this one particular wall is concrete. And anyway, it's a long story, but the concrete's <laughs> porous. Previous owners try to paint it. Paint flaked off. They try to scrape it off. It's like this dusty mess. So I, you know, I vacuumed the wall. I've had time <laughs> to clean everything. Absolutely, yeah. And that's and it's it's weird. Yeah, you you catch you definitely catch yourself doing that type of like. For me, it's always like I'll I just I make weird faces, and I realize like if I'm listening to certain types of music, I'm listening or I'm doing certain things. Like I just catch myself like. You know, I'll catch it like in the res- the reflection of my my laptop or my phone, but I catch myself making like a weird face, and I'm just like, "What a, what am I doing right now?" <laughs> but uh, all right, so the, the second one here is uh, you know, especially in the early few months of the year, it's when a lot of diets come into play. Um, a lot of people are trying to get their summer body in shape. They're trying to do their resolution, so a lot of diets are coming in. But quarantine kind of threw a lot of that out of the out of the window. So what's either one food that you can't get enough of during quarantine or one food that you've like just overly binged on? I've had way more ice cream than I would normally have. Um, and what's your flavor? Uh, I'm a Ben and Jerry's guy. I like half baked. It's a really savage flavor. It's like cookie dough and double chocolate fudge mixed together brownie. Crazy. Everything. It's basically just everything all mushed together. Um, yeah. It's about half ice cream and half foreign objects like cookie dough and fudge and chocolate chunks and shit. Um, so that's, you know, um, you pay for that. You yep. pay for that in, in, in the long run, but it tastes dairy, amazing. Oh my dairy, God. Is, uh, dairy is tough on you when you're, when you're eating a lot of it. <laughs> yes. Yes. It will catch up to you. Yep. Um, so the third question here is, you know, live live music has kind of come to a halt uh, with everything going on. You know, a lot of things have come to a halt, but live music is is one of those, you know, sports, those type of things that we do for entertainment. Um, so people still want to put their music out to the fans. And what's something that either you've seen or you've done through this that you thought like, damn, that was that was really innovative to like get my get my music out or get people to absorb music nowadays. Um. I think my favorite thing to watch was Premier and RZA battling. Uh, I don't know if you caught that. But, yeah. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. I mean, it wasn't anything more than what you can make it. You know, it's essentially still what we're doing right here, but they were having a battle. But I I loved it. It was super dope. And, and one of the uh, highlights of it was just the chat room and how popping that was at the same time as the battle. It was, it was, it was really tight, but I think, you know, if something like that would have never happened because if if this circumstance didn't occur. So that's a nice little silver lining that maybe we discovered now that that stone's rolling, you know, it might start to collect a little moss in the future. I feel like. Yeah, I think that, and I think that like VR concerts is another thing that may that may start to creep up when uh, when all this is over. Seeing seeing how some people have done shows from inside of their house, and now they're starting to talk about festivals that are going to take place where artists are performing in different venues, and then it's just going to all live stream on a spot. So, um, so along with that, along with music, you know, music tends to be a creative outlet for a lot of people, whether it's uh, people that consume it for different reasons or whether it's people that are creating it. Um, but, you know, during this time, people have had a chance to kind of explore other sides to their creativity. So is there anything that you found, like a hidden talent you found throughout this or something that you have just been trying to do that you just hadn't tried before? Um, you know what? Uh, I've been, I draw a little bit, so I've been drawing a little bit, but I've been doing that for some years. I really just do that as a hobby, as like an outlet. Something that I have, been to, I think the direct answer to this is I've been playing drums uh, lately. 
Um, so I have a drum kit in the crib, and I've been stuck, man, in the crib. So I find myself sitting down at the drum kit and pounding out drums. That's um, super cool. Drum, drum, drum sets are they're tough to get a hold of. Like that's <laughs> when you're talking your hand foot coordination. That's like I could always play a snare drum, but when I get behind a kit, like it's it's super tough to try and get everything lined up. Four limbs is 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 something, man. Four limbs is something else. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, practice makes perfect, and muscle memory, and, and whatever. And um, so I don't know. Yeah, I've been having fun with that, playing some drums. Yeah, that's sweet, man. And uh, uh, the last question I have for you here is, you know, as society, you know, it's not going to just all come back to normal at once, but it's, they're talking about it slowly starting to reopen. Um, what's one thing that you're really excited for to come back in the, in the, in the society? Um, I miss everything, man. Uh, I'm, I'm a super, I miss the idea or I'm, I'm, I'm frightened by the idea that live shows might be in jeopardy. So I'd really like to make sure live shows come back just as like a security thing, <laughs> you know, right. but, I'm, but I miss everything, man. Um, I'm foodie. So I miss, I got my heart broken like 30 times over when this happened when all my favorite food spots closed. Um, I, can't, I would love for them to open back up. It's not all of them survived this super unfortunately. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled, dude. I miss just going to get like some coffee in the drive through and shit like that. Um, Absolutely, man. Been cool. yeah. I've been making stuff for myself. I'm sure you have too, but I'm ready to go get served <laughs> in the public <laughs> when it all, when it all comes back. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's nice when you can go and like, uh, you know, get your roadside pickup or whatever, but like going to sit down in a restaurant and like having that experience again, it's, it's definitely a, a lot different of an experience that you're having. Um, yes. um, I hope restaurants come back to full, you know, all the way the way they were, you know, Absolutely, man. Um, so I'm just I'm just running through some of these uh, some of the questions that came through and some of the comments that came through. But it looked like I saw somebody had asked uh, C. Murphy asked, "What's your favorite city to perform in and your favorite show from memory?" Ooh, ooh, good questions, good questions. Dang, I saw my dude Kid Cut Up just slid in the room. That's awesome. What, uh, what a Kid Cut Up. Um, favorite show, favorite city. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I hate to just put it all on Denver because that's like, just feels like a gimme or whatever. I played Red Rocks recently, um, in October and it was super nuts. It was like sold all the way out. Um, and, and so that's amazing and that's awesome. And Red Rocks is historic and that, that seems like a gimme. So I can, I kind of got to give it to Red Rocks, but in particular, there was this one amazing show I played in Tempe, Arizona uh okay. a few years back and um it was on a tech nine tour and you know that's an opening gig for me and that's cool i like i like opening and i like uh winning the crowd over or whatever but i had this experience godimus was there with me it was a Cess crew show um i had this experience of a feeling like the whole 1800 people or however many people was there something like eight, something like that were like my audience like, for whatever reason, we just connected with them super hard, and we were commanding them like we had commanded the entire room, which usually that's not the case when you're the opening act or whatever. And it was like, wow. I never forgot that show. It was like in 2017 in Tokyo, Arizona. Yeah, it's, it's really intense to see, like, to, to feel that connection when you when you're not that headliner. Um, I know some of, the, some of my friends have been through uh, – like the last one I remember was student one, uh, a guy from, uh, from Minneapolis, St. Paul here. And he, uh, performed at sound set and he was one of the first artists to perform, but the, the stage he was on the side stage and it was packed and people were screaming his lyrics back at him. And he was like, I wasn't ready for that. Like I, I figured like there'd be a handful of people over there. Everybody would be at main stage. And like just that experience is uh it's a it's a pretty crazy thing to see. Yeah, crowd crowd energy can uh can take you uh by surprise, knock you off guard, especially when you don't see it coming. Um because you know, even as an artist, I don't ever know what to expect. Sometimes the crowd will surprise the shit out of you. Right. right. And, and that's and that will change the entire show, you know. Right. So that's it's really memorable for me. 
Yeah, and it's cool you brought up Denver. I actually, so I took the first flight I've ever taken in my life was just out to Denver. Uh, right before all this hit, like early March, uh, I flew out to Denver. I got to see Red Rocks and go hiking up there and like just see the city of Denver. And man, it's it's such a, a great town. Like not only their music scene is incredible, but like the the whole city itself is is really dope. Um, yeah, yeah, I love it there. I grew I um, grew up there, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it's dope. It's a it's it was cool. I was I was really nervous for a lot of it, but but uh once I landed there, it just it felt like another home. I mean, being in Minneapolis, St. Paul here, Denver felt very similar to it. So um um I think they got some other ones coming in. How long have you and Vinny made it not starving together? Oh shit. Uh, they're talking about this game I played on Twitch. I don't know, like maybe twenty days or something. I'm not sure. Twenty five days. Um, Ten seconds since I played it. Um, man, you got somebody in the house from Brazil. It looks like too. Oh, that's tight. Going to Brazil, dope. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd love to get out there. The last uh. The last thing that I, I wanted to do for you is to just let you kind of tell everybody um, what you got going on right now, like uh, promote anything that you're looking to promote. I know they got the 50% off Strange Music right now, um, all the merch there on the site. Um, so I just kind of want to give that to you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that is, that's a nice little side effect that's happening right now. Yeah, all my merch is half off or sometimes even more than half off, including my music. Um, the hard copies of the CD are half off at, at uh, strangemusicinc.net right now is where the web store is. And when you get there, you just got to search UBI and it'll all pop up. You know what I'm saying? All the Seth's Crew shit, too, is all on sale, too. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm really still pushing my solo record, um, Under Bad Influence. Uh, Read Him and Weep recently came out the video yeah. for when we came out um i got one more video that's coming out in the can uh called light em up which is a song featuring Godimus off of under bad influence and i can't tell you when it's going to drop but the video <laughs> looks super dope um so i can't wait to get that out to y'all my, my my bro uh uh Godimus is uh his record distro is about yeah. almost all the way out he's about to drop his full length um, so all that's going on and yeah, man, we just waiting for this shit to lift so we can get back get to doing back. shows and put together a tour, man. Absolutely, man. Well, I'm excited for it to come. Um, I'm excited for, for everything that you guys are going to be putting out here. And I mean, everybody should check in or, uh, check up with you on Twitch too. If they're, if you're gamers, I know I'm a big gamer. I've been still heavy on overwatch. I've been playing that for, since it came out and it's just the only game that really sucks me in. So <laughs> Um, but everybody should check you out. Um, you said it's ubiquitous. Twitch. Um, yeah, it's ubiquitous. Twitch. U B I Q U I T W I T C H is my Twitch handle. Well, hey man, thank you. thanks again for uh, for checking in with us, and I hope all's going well there. Uh, happy belated birthday to to the little man too. Appreciate that. Thanks, man. Yeah, we both just had our birthdays, man. And yeah, yeah everything's cool here. It's quiet. I'm ready to get uh, get into some shit though. I can't wait to till this all lifts. I know. I was. I'm such a like. I'm a homebody type of person, and I'm I'm at home a lot, and it's quiet a lot. But now it's like, all right. I need that. I need that crowd. I need that live music back. I need. <laughs> I need the balance. Totally. Totally. All right, man. Paul, you have a great night. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on here.